Molly is what I would describe as um, a neurotic bitch. Her aggressive personality has the entire neighbourhood running scared. <laughs> Alfie is a northern Inuit who's a total yob. Inside the house, he's an absolute nightmare. He howls the house down and destroys anything he gets his jaws on. The leather puff, he's had a go at my settee. I've lost count of the number of pairs of shoes that he's had a go at. Absolute nightmare. The dogs constantly bark, and if there's nobody around to shut them up, then they just continue to bark. It's now reached crisis in the close. It's come to the point with the neighbours now where we don't really speak, frankly. If things don't get better with the dog's behaviour, then Linda and Caesar will make enemies of everybody in the close. All their problems could be solved with one simple solution the Colangelos are avoiding like the plague. These dogs are out of control. Alfie is destroying the house. Molly is barking so much that the neighbours are complaining and the close is in crisis. And it all boils down to one thing. Because they're bad on the lead, they are not getting enough exercise. But today, I am going to change all that. They're working dogs, so they need lots of mental and physical stimulation. To find out how important exercise and instruction are to dogs like these, Victoria's on her way to meet an expert. Sally Leach lives with all these huskies. I don't think I've ever been in a room with so many dogs before. <laughs> Have you not? No. <laughs> Sally's been a husky fanatic right. for over 30 years. It's amazing how well adjusted these dogs are, and you know, you have 32 of them, whereas people who have just one or two dogs seem to have lost complete control. I think it's really important that, that animals, just like children, I suppose, have clear boundaries. They need a lot of exercise, a, a very active life, a lot of interest in their life. They, if they're bored, they become destructive. So, to keep this giant pack in check, Sally turns to the 2,000-year-old tradition of husky racing. What about the configuration of these dogs? Do you put dogs in certain places? Yes, well, I mean, the lead dogs are probably the most important dogs on the team because they have to listen to you, plus set the pace, keep the line out. Mm -hmm. And you tend to have your bigger dogs at the back, um, what we call wheel dogs, because they take the most jerking from the, the vehicle they're pulling. I, ha I have to have a go. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Incredibly, the dogs can pull the quad bike at up to 20 miles an hour. Now, this is what I call travelling. This is... <laughs> Good, Racing huskies are trained to respond to specific commands. Hike is get going, whoa is put the brakes on, G is right, and hop is left. Hop, hop. Good dogs. Hop means left, yeah. yeah. That's it. Hop, hop. I do think it's really important that dogs do get clear signals from their owners, especially with Molly and Alfie, who really don't know where they are because there's no consistency and no clear communication. With these dogs, they've been trained well. They know exactly what to do when a command is issued, and they're having fun, and that is the most important thing. This is a great way to use up lots of energy for working dogs, but it's slightly impractical for the Colangelos back in Peterborough. So Victoria's got an idea. I brought you here today because I have a little surprise for you, which I think you and the dogs are going to love. It's called Canny Cross. Eileen and Andrew are being tugged along by their huskies, Pacha and Alexi. Oh, wow. Yeah. I hope you can run. <laughs> oh, God. It's perfect for Alfie and Molly, who've always pulled their owners when out and about. It's also good exercise for couch potato Caesar. How do you feel about this? I think the dogs will enjoy it probably more than what we will. This activity is one fun run for the dogs. And because they pull the extra weight of their owners, they get one hell of a workout. How does that feel, that 
it looks fantastic. I enjoyed it. But for the first time, they could actually run with us. You can sort of stay. I need a medal, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, fantastic. But it was really, really was really good fun. Well, I think this is something you should definitely do because I think it's going to be so beneficial for your dogs and so beneficial for you too. There's no excuse for Alfie and Molly's destructive chewing. I can't stress to you how important it is that these dogs get out twice a day and for good walks. That's the number one way you stop chewing. So by the time they get back, they're so tired, they sleep. But just to be certain, all temptations locked away. Excellent. <coughs> Perfect. Can't get those doors open. And tough chew toys are introduced as alternatives to the family's shoes, coats and bags. It's the end of Victoria's training regime. She's done the groundwork. The rest is up to Caesar and Linda. Now, all of this training will be for nothing. If you do not keep on with it, and if you are not consistent. Therefore, I'm looking at you, Caesar Colangelo. You better keep this training up. And if you don't, I will come down on you like a ton of bricks. I'll give you my word, I will do my utmost to continue. Just giving the dogs regular exercise has meant the bored barking has ceased and the once terrified neighbours can at last relax. Alfie doesn't bark at all, he's very quiet. The dogs are in the garden, no barking. It's brilliant. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.